Today on Larry King Now, I'm Will Wheaton, taking over the hosting duties for Larry. I am chatting with media mogul and my longtime friend, Chris Hardwick. On net neutrality, yes. it, it would almost be like trying to charge people for bigger words in language or something. Right. Where At Midnight came from. The first second I saw the show, I was like, this show's amazing. Yeah. I want to do this. On the craziness that is San Diego Comic Con. Ian e. McKellen's talking to Daniel yeah. Craig, who's yeah. and then Harrison Ford's I know. over there. It's plus. Marvel versus DC. I, that one I, I will never answer. It's just You too... coward, answer it. No, I don't want to answer it. That's all next on Larry King Now with me, Will Wheaton. Welcome to Larry King Now, I'm Will Wheaton. It is my honor to be filling in for the legend, Larry King. Uh, my guest today is a man of many titles. He is a comedian, a television host, a nerd icon, and if there's an after show, you can be certain he is hosting it. Who are you talking to? No, lean back, you're oh, wrecking oh, it. sorry. He's my friend of 30 years. Say hello to Chris Hardwick. I don't, is it 30? I think it might be 25. We met when I was 17. And I was, I was and you 17 were or 18. 17 or 18. Yeah, 25. And I'm 42 now. Do the uh, math. I'm 28. You are? Mm -hmm. You look not good for 28. We met when we went to see the movie Arachnophobia. Yes. Uh, At the Burbank AMC 10. Which was a spider movie. Right. And we should, I, we should watch that movie again, because I haven't seen it I, since <laughs> then. You know, we went in to see that movie, and I thought, because I don't like spiders at all. Okay. And, and I thought, oh, it's just going to be like a big, stupid, fake spider. Who cares? Right. And that I had just met you because yeah. you were you were in the uh, fraternity with Cal, right? And I had just met you, and we were sitting next to each other, and I spent most of that movie halfway into your lap <laughs> 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 because I was so freaked out. And but, uh, now, we've been, we've this been, time this you is can a go full lap. Really? Yeah. I feel like this is our uh, this is our interview segment for the When Harry Met Sally reboot. <laughs> 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 That's how we met. So I asked for a cake, uh, Tardis Blue, with a lot of the doctors on the side. Uh, by the way, why do you hate spiders? Erase the hate, Will. Spidergate 2014? God, What's no, happening? man, they're terrifying. When, when I've done the show and Larry's on the other side, <laughs> yeah. his interview technique, Larry has a very distinct mechanism. Right. And I don't know if it's intentional or not, but it works. Yeah. And that is, he never lets you get your footing. Right. So he'll add, so it's like innocuous question, innocuous question, and then sideswipe. Right. So it's like, uh, so uh, Chris, uh, tell me about this Doctor Who phenomenon. Well, you know, the Doctor is an alien who travels space and, and time. And the Doctor came from Gallifrey. Came from Gallifrey, yeah, yeah. And now let's talk about the Holocaust. Oh my God, um, uh, of the Daleks? I don't know. <laughs> So it's a it's a really uh, he he really never he never lets you get your footing right and so then you just find yourself spilling all the stuff to him because you're not you're not because you're just trying to catch up yeah you're always trying to catch up yeah, you're always right. trying to catch up yeah. it, you being interviewed by Larry is like being a puppy on a leash for the first time yeah where you're just like I don't oh yeah. now we're here right. okay uh, and you start tugging a little bit but it's like no I'm stronger than you you know so he uh, he's a very powerful man. I want to catch people up who don't uh, who don't know this about us. Chris and I have been friends forever, as we as we mentioned. And uh, Chris was in the comedy club at UCLA, and we lived together in Westwood. Chris mm -hmm. was attending UCLA. I kept trying to attend UCLA, and I kept leaving because I was getting acting work. Right. Um, but you were in the comedy club. I was. And you started with like. Basically everybody from that that like first year of the comedy club has gone on to do really great, super cool things. Yeah, a lot of people. And I was at your first show, which I think was at Sproul. Sproul Hall. Yeah, and I thought it was hilarious. Oh, thanks. And, and it was really fun. It was you and Furman and, and just like all those guys. Yeah. Right? Um, and uh, at that time, I would not have pegged you for someone who was going to go on to be a successful stand-up comedian. Not that you wouldn't be successful, but that I thought you were going to go in other directions. You were like looking at fine arts, you had been doing a bunch of math stuff, and <laughs> right? I mean, they were like, I was, trying to, I, I, was maybe, trying, to, I was trying to go through the animation program. Right, I remember, I, I thought for sure you were going to end up being an animator, or we would go to those animation festivals and then Spike come and home. Mike. Right, we, we would come home and draw storyboards for like yeah. what we were going to do together yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. We, just, we discovered Ren and Stimpy together. That's right. 
Um, Do you remember the bootleg uh, Ren and Stimpy VHS we had that had Space Madness in Japanese? Yeah, yeah. I still have that. Yeah, well, you and had I a, do not have a VHS player because because you were a, because you were a, a privileged, spoiled actor child. You had yes, I you was. had a lot of disposable income that most sixteen-year-olds do not, seventeen-year-olds do not have. That's true. So you had crates of. <laughs> I saw I saw my first. Well, maybe this isn't for air. I saw my first hentai porn. That's uh, right, Urutsuki Doji. Urutsuki Doji, right, Demon, Demon City. City. Yeah, yeah, I remember that's it. Right. I saw uh, it. I actually made a reference to that. This is uh, not a good I, leaning chair. Yeah, well, you're not. It's it's you're not intended to lean, sir. Can we lower the back, sir? Can I get taller? One mm. of those things would be fine. No, I never answered your earlier question. So I want to bring it around to you doing stand up. So Mandroid's great. I love. Mandroid. Oh, thanks. Um, and when so I already don't like it. So there's so that's what I was going to ask you is that I figure like maybe you're like you're over it and you feel like I burned that material and done with it. Oh yeah, yeah. You um, can't do the same material once it's uh, it's special. So you're about to go out on tour. Yes, I'm going back on tour next year in 2015. I'm going to do 16 cities and nice theaters. Yeah. Uh, it's called Fun Comfortable because that seems to be <laughs> the tone that. of the material I've been writing lately. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and so people can go. It's like you know, 16 cities like you yeah. know, the Portlands and Seattle's and you know Chicago's of the world. Yeah. Oh, uh, you're going to the, the the beard over cities. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Where do uh, we go to get tickets? Uh, AXS.com and then just search Chris Hardwick and it'll or Nerdist.com will have the ticket info as well. That's awesome. Thank you. So are you sort of like, do you have your list, like maybe six things? I'm thinking about this, and then maybe you just grab one of those things and, and, and work around it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of points where we can jump off in, in directions we can go in. So first of all, writing process for me is normally... Um, I need to be on stage to write. So I'll, you know, I'll have a bunch of concepts and then I was doing a show at our nurse theater at Meltdown Comics mm -hmm. called Beta Test and basically you just don't get a lot of stage time in LA like you right. can get short sets but I, some the concept for the show was three comics get 20 minutes and they have to do brand new material and the show's free so there's no risk of yeah. anyone being like I paid for this. Yeah. We have to take a break right now I'm getting the red light but when we come back we are going to talk about at midnight and Chris and I will take on net neutrality so stick around. We're going to take it on? Yeah. Oh. All right, so I want to talk with you about At Midnight. Okay. Uh, it is, according to my notes here, a wildly successful show on Comedy Central. And you're really good on it, too. And I'm not... Oh, I, I, thank you. And I know I know a lot of what we're doing on the table is we're just slobbering on each other because we love each other. But you really are... You excel. Oh, thanks, excel dude. Thank show. you. I, um, I, I love it. I love being on At Midnight. And I play the hashtag wars on Twitter all the time. And I never win. I never get points <laughs> online, and I want to bring up a couple that I've written, uh, written recently. Okay. Um, uh, earlier this year, on January 16th, it was uh, romantic action movies. Mm -hmm. Mine was Bridesmaids versus Predator. Okay, great. Points. Thank you. Are you looking for retroactive points? I am, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> May 5th, mm -hmm. it was uh, Ruin a Rap Track. Straight out of Compton is a brother that'll take your mother out for a nice steak dinner. Points, definitely. Thank you very much. Although, would yeah. that ruin a rap track, though? Um... Yeah, because there's a drive-by when you go to the Oh, okay, yeah, that would ruin yeah, it. Yeah, that's in the yeah. second verse. I only okay. have 140 characters, man. I'm yeah, not, I know. You know. Twitter's very limited. All right, that way. okay, and then the last one uh, uh, that I'm particularly proud of, this is from July 17th, it was uh, Depressing Disney. Mm -hmm. uh, Beauty and the Yeast Infection. Really? Oh, excellent. All right, that's, that's like, okay, so I, I don't get points for the for, for rap, that's fine, but I get two out of three points, which, you is, get two which, out of is, which is really good. As Meatloaf said, two. Uh, uh, bad. That's that's absolutely true. Um, do you uh, do you think that you can take some credit for like maybe like mainstreaming puns for the 21st century? I don't know. <clears throat> you know when Twitter for God damn it! Oh, this is not made. Stop leaning. I love your Tardis tie, by the way. Oh, thank. You know it's a, a, a free tie bow tie. I tied it myself. Did you really? Yeah. You know I really wanted to get suspenders and like do the whole Larry King thing today. Yeah. And I've just been I've been working all week and I didn't have. I didn't have time to, to get out and get, and get Are you going to tell me there's not an extra pair of suspenders around this goddamn studio? Do you think that I'm fit to wear Larry King suspenders? Yes! No, listen, he'll that's, never listen, know. No, listen, that's very, Wait, very he'll kind, come in and be like, Wait a minute. Who touched these? What's happening? <clears throat> what the f***? <laughs> Newark, New Jersey, who wore my suspenders? Go. <laughs> <laughs> I was well waiting, Larry. <laughs> Wait on! <laughs> um, you kill him. So, uh, so you did. The, so, how did the hashtag wars come about, and what was the development process like? Okay, right. the development process was really fun yeah. because, and then I'll tell you about the hashtag wars. But um, so, I had done a pilot a couple years ago for Comedy Central. I guess in maybe in 2011, I went into their office, and they were like, "Do you want to do a show?" And I said, "Of course." Um, and they said, "What do you want to do?" And I said, "Well, 
I used to work on this show called Attack of the Show on G4, mm -hmm. and I loved Attack of the Show. I felt like G4 never really got the platform that it needed to blow up, and then they had all these political fights with DirecTV, and it got right. cut from a lot of televisions and so on and so forth, and, uh, and uh, these goddamn kids today don't watch as much television as they watch the internets. <sighs> I know that feel, bro. So, <laughs> so um, I said, you know, Attack of the Show was a super fun show, but yeah. I felt it was an information show first and then a comedy show second. Yeah. It was like, let's deliver this material in a fun way, but it really has to be informational. I said, what if we flip that formula and took this kind of, you know, this source material from the same place, this kind of digital internet world, and comedy first, and then information. Right. And and you were a part of it. You did the pilot with yeah. me. But anyway, so we decided. Uh, they Comedy Central said we're not going to move forward with your show. But we want to do a different show. We wanted this different show. Tom Leonard hosted the pilot of this other show that was developed by this company called Serious Business with Funny or Die. Right. And so um, they said, would you want to host this? So it was called Tweeter Dome, and it was basically just a Twitter centric show. Uh huh. And the pilot was Tom Lennon hosting. And uh, Kumail Nanjiani, Natasha Leggero, and Weird Al. Mm -hmm. And the first second I saw the show, I was like, this show's amazing. Yeah. I want to do this. And so I came in and we redeveloped the show and made it about not just Twitter, but any social media being any place where people interact online, any community where, where human beings are interacting is our source material. And so I said, hey, I have this comedy theater. We should do this once a week you know, all summer until the show premieres because they agreed to give us a one-month run in October mm -hmm. of last year just to see how the show fared after Colbert. Yeah. And I said, we need to, let's this let's just do this show live as many times as possible. So we did, so we honed it. And I had, rem you know, when Twitter first started, a version of the hashtag game happened all Almost the time. Almost all the time, yeah. And then it really sort of petered out. People just yeah. sort of got... I don't know, whatever, the novelty of it wore off. And right. so I said, we should be a part of the game. Like, we should, because, like, super quick jokes, you know, hashtag game. And so they said, okay, so we tried it, and it crushed when we did it at uh, Meltdown. Right. And so it just sort of became a regular fixture of the show. And then, like, when we started doing it in the show, I don't even think it was supposed to be a regular segment, but it was, like, it was it was the top of the worldwide trends every night. We have to go to a break. All but right. when we come back, Chris will walk us through his crazy daily schedule and he will give us a glimpse into the future. No, don't take my pen away! <laughs> Stay with us. Just go away, because no, it's got this God much of my camera. No, you don't get this, you get this one. No, I'm the host. No, this time. I'm hosting you. That's all next on Larry. We'll King be right now. back. God! <laughs> we done! Hardwick! back talking to Chris Hardwick. So let's talk about something that's really important to both of us. Mm -hmm. uh, we both have sort of made the second act in our careers happen because we've been able to reach audiences to the internet. Right. And one of the reasons we've been able to do that and compete with like established people yeah. is because traffic on the internet is considered neutral. That's right. right. So now so, that we're successful, it'd be really great if people had to pay a premium to get to, those to <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, all right. So I'm kidding. Uh, okay. So, 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 it, like, explain as, as briefly as you can the the principle of net neutrality. Well, uh, essentially, it's a way. It, these bigger companies are trying to find a way to right. charge so people and and basically throttle them if they're not paying as much for certain parts of the internet, which is fucking ridiculous. Right. Right. So the idea is right now. Every piece of thing, every piece of information that goes on the internet is treated the same. Is equal. It's treated neutrally. Treated neutral. So something that true comes, neutral. Right. So something that comes from a huge established media company like Google. Right. Is treated as ex with exactly the same like priority as right. something that comes from some little startup like Ello. Of course. Example, okay? Which is very important mm. because the, you know the internet is is as it's <clears throat> the way we communicate now. Yeah. It, it would almost be like trying to charge people for bigger words in language or something. Right. Like you or an, ex an, an example I use is if like I wanted to call, if I wanted to make a phone call to my cable provider, that call wouldn't cost me anything. It would happen right away. But if I wanted to make a phone call to change my cable provider, then maybe I could either pay a premium, listen to an additional ad, or right. have to wait a certain amount of time. Like phone calls are all treated, they all go at exactly the same right. rate. So there is this debate right now, um, and, and it's strange to me, it doesn't seem like it's much of a debate. Like the overwhelming majority, you cannot get Americans to agree on anything, and the overwhelming majority of Americans are in favor of net neutrality. But of course, the telecommunications companies who are evil are trying <laughs> very hard to, to stamp it down. So, well, I have the argument for the you. The arg well, before you get to your question, I heard a funny argument for it the other day where they go, uh, 
well, this is just so we can create more jobs. And I go, well, why don't you just go into the middle of the desert and then blow a big hole in the middle of the desert and then just hire people to fill it in? Like, right. if, you, if you just want to create jobs. Yeah. If the, the internet is not treated neutral, if, if they don't reclassify it as Title II or whatever, how, how is that going to affect your fan base? Well, I mean, it, it, when you start throwing up paywalls or you start throttling people, it obviously, I mean, it's almost like, um, it's almost like creating a, which is oddly the name of my uh, company, a fish ladder, where you're yeah. basically forcing, you know, like the idea of a fish ladder is you're forcing salmon to yeah. go a certain way, yeah. uh, or you're cre you're basically creating a maze that people have to take to get to the to get to the information that they want or need, and uh, and you're essentially capitalizing what should be a very free-flowing, like we should all share for humanity's sake. So let's roll back the clock a little bit and say that it's so, Nerdist Industries has been around, like the podcast, I remember when you started the podcast, because that was about three, four years ago? 2010, about, we're about, about right? to be five yeah. years old. Okay, all right, so we'll go back to the beginning of that. Yeah. And uh, you're getting ready to do that, and the internet is not neutral. You somehow have to, somehow you have to pay to get your, th sure. how, are you able, if, if, the, if, if the internet is not neutral, are, do you think you're able to get from Chris Hardwick, like, you know, guy who's done these other things, to Chris Hardwick, the emperor of Nerdist Industries? <laughs> no. Like, I mean, because you can't do it, right? Because no, I think it's the same thing. If I don't have an internet, neutral internet, I am for the rest of my life Will Wheaton, former child actor. I'm not the person I am today. Well, exactly. And, and also, uh, people aren't communicating as freely as they should be, yeah. and people aren't getting information that they need, or like we sh everyone should have access to the same information. Yeah. I mean, it, in, order to, um, in order to move forward as a culture, it shouldn't just be the most, pri I mean, and you and I are lucky because we just happen to be privileged. Yeah. But, it, but not everyone has the same privilege, but everyone should have the same access to the same information. What I realize is if you throw enough nerds at something, they can figure it out. Yeah. But when you start trying to carve up, like, you know, like create walled gardens and you can't go here unless you have this access or you're not cool enough, first of all, it sort of flies in the face of of, of nerddom anyway. Right, because uh, we like to take stuff apart. We like to take stuff apart and we yeah. also, you know, although we can be elitist, like part of the reasons why we were formed the mutant powers that we had is because we were ostracized. Yeah, right. And so, and so I'm against that. And so I feel like, Everyone needs to have access to the same information so everyone can solve, try to solve the same problems or, or yep. experience the same, experience the same things. And, and it's, I feel like it's vital for us as a, as a species to not start trying to carve it up and prevent certain people without the right access. You said a thing about nerds being ostracized, which I've worked really hard to change as I've become sort of like a high profile nerd. Sure. Right? And um, uh, when, uh, when in your life did you like go, I'm a nerd. Like when did you, is there a moment? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, I mean, it's, it's sort of a silly moment, but it was when I saw the movie Revenge of the Nerds. My dad took me to see it in the theater. Yeah. And it wasn't until I saw the movie where I was like, oh, oh yeah, that's, yeah. I, I am, I'm into computers, I'm into, yeah. this is me, like this is, this is what I am. Yep. And so I just didn't know before that because this was in the 80s in a pre-internet world and yeah. so I didn't know, um, I, I did not have the, you know, the localized community of humans mm -hmm. that could be a support group. I just had like three or four people. You know, our chess club was also the computer lab, which was also the math department. And, uh, and that's where I spent most of my time. I did not get along well with other kids and, you know, but I also had this ass comic gene, so I did not, I did not have a problem like speaking out. You think the internet's made it easier for nerds to find each other and feel like, oh wait, actually I am kind of, I am normal in my own way. There's no question that it's yeah. been able to do, it's, it's created communities, you know, yeah. like we had, I had three or four people in my school and then occasionally you could go to like a hobby shop or a comic book store and some, you know, type of proto Comic Con might roll through town, but it was really just a bunch of people with comic books and crates. Yeah. But at least it was like, oh, there are others out there like this. But but ultimately, we lived in the shadows. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, I feel like that people can go two ways with that. And the dark side is where is where you know the nerds sort of get like, F you, this is mine, and you're not a nerd, right. and you're not like nerd under yeah. violence. They're, it's they're really like, they're, up. They're like they're gatekeepers. They're gatekeepers. I I, 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 um, I, I wrote on Twitter yesterday. Uh, like maybe instead of being a gatekeeper, be an ambassador. Exactly. Or, or a guide. Like let's 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 let them in. Or can you, uh, can in we twenty have... seconds give me a, a a an average Chris Hardwick day at Comic Con? 
Oh, at Comic-Con? Yeah. Uh, well, there's about four hours of sleep. I usually get up around 7 in the morning. I usually start doing interviews with panels at 9 a.m., uh, do panels throughout the day. I eat sandwiches on the go, try to throw some Starbucks chai in my face to yeah. have the caffeine going. Um, then usually at about 7 o'clock, I'll have to start getting ready for a live show. Uh, if there's two live shows, then after that, go out and, and at least get to say hi to my friends for an hour before it's about 2 o'clock in the morning, then get up again and do it all over again. Is there a person you meet at Comic-Con that breaks you? Because you're like, I can't, I met Henry Rollins yesterday, and it broke me. Uh, and he's amazing. I, it broke me, I couldn't believe it. Who's the person that breaks you at Comic-Con? Um, well, uh, Harrison Ford was pretty crazy, yeah. um, uh, and then uh, Ian McKellen was pretty insane. Uh, I mean, like, it's just, it's nonstop. It's just like any one of the experiences, seeing them in groups, the yeah, waiting right. room no, I know. above I know. Hall H, where yeah. you're like, Ian McKellen's talking to Daniel yeah. Craig, who's yeah. and then Harrison Ford's over there. It's like every fan fiction I've ever written and all the people I've ever shipped have come together in one room, yeah. and I wish I had the scripts for them to perform it. When we come back, we are going to really crank up the nerd speak here. We're going to talk Star Wars, Doctor Who, Marvel versus DC, so don't go anywhere. Fake nerds. <laughs> Hashtag fake nerds. I have a question that I forgot to ask you in the last Please. that It just didn't really fit into things. Is there a thing that you wish was still analog? Um, oh man, that's a really good question. Do, is there a thing I still wish was? While you think about it, I'll tell you. So Dave Parker came over to my house uh, of ours. A, a, a couple of weeks ago, and we broke out records. Mm -hmm. And all our house and techno and reggae records from when we lived together in college mm -hmm. were all in a crate. And we just sat there and listened to The Prodigy and Kicks Like a Mule and, and 808 State and, 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 and like all, all of that stuff. Oh, yeah. And there was something really magical about putting the needle on the record, mm -hmm. right? As, a, as opposed to like, oh, here is this, you know, I have the Earth to Infinity CD as MP3s, which is great, but that analog experience, like yeah. it's kind of cool. Well, yeah, because I think we take for granted now that, um, and I do it too, but you don't really have to do anything to get the hamster pellet, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like before, you actually had to do a little bit of work. Yeah, you gotta find the thing. Yeah, yeah. You gotta be patient with it. Like, yeah. well, it's a record. You don't, you don't really want to jump around too much. You really right. have to enjoy it as yeah. a thing. Yeah. And, and so, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I, I think, I think, but records like people are the vinyl businesses kind of bounce back yeah. a bit. Um, let's talk about Star Wars: mm -hmm. The Force Awakens. Do you have an opinion on it? You know, the title, whatever, it's sort of like everyone made fun of right? iPad when it came out. Yeah. And now everyone has, you know, so I, I kind of feel like as long as the title's not Star Wars, go f yourselves, nerds. Right. Like, I'm, I'm feeling okay about it's it. It's fine. Right? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I, I think, uh, um, I think the stuff that JJ's been reaching, re releasing online, and yeah. it's like little Instagrammy things that it all looks really cool. And yeah. he, you know, he Aren't didn't you? even really like Star Wars. I mean, Star Trek, and he made yeah. a Star Trek movie. Yeah. But but he but like Star Wars to him is very precious, and I love the idea that it it does not seem to be uh, a CG fun factory. Yeah. Like it definitely feels like it's in the spirit of the original <laughs> film, and so I'm excited. Do you feel like maybe we're a little weird about Star Wars because people in our generation feel like we were so burned? that we're immediately defensive about it. What's interesting is that a friend of mine with kids seemed to point out that his kids were more into episodes one, two, and three than four, five, and six. Mm -hmm. Like those blew the kids' minds away. Yeah. And we're like, what? And then you go, oh yeah, well. Because that's, it's that's made for them. It's made for them. So like some of the darker themes of Empire is maybe not, maybe a, a, your average six-year-old isn't gonna, you know, really uh, stick to. Yeah. But, you know, so it may be it may be the case that we will never be satisfied because our brains just can't possibly you just we just don't get as many of those experiences anymore. But I am very optimistic. I want to like it. I'm not I'm not going in where most people I think have already written bad reviews for things before they've even seen them. Yeah, of course. And so I just would like to <laughs> it's like they have they have obituaries set up for people yes. like for the second they die. Yes, right? yes, that's so exactly that's right. It's basically like pop culture obituary, pop yeah. culture obits. Yeah. And so let's just experience things and then and then we can judge them. Are you going to celebration? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Can I go with you? Yes, you can. I've never been to a celebration. Celebration's great. I went to it when it was in uh, Orlando. Yeah, it's in Anaheim next it's year. It's in Anaheim next year, which is um, a much nicer commute than Orlando. A lot easier, right? Um, and so, Really, can I go with you? Can I be like your date? Yes, of course you can. Okay, you saw it on TV. It's on the internet, so it has, so it has to happen. You have to let me get to second base, right? I mean, uh, Yeah, of course. I mean the second base on... Indoor.
It, uh, yeah, <laughs> well, Endor second, second base. Moon is, base. Yeah. <laughs> you can listen. You come to my moon base anytime you want. Yeah, I let's appreciate do, that. I'm going to bring these. A, uh, I'm going to bring these. Uh, the Ewoks are really just like uh, inbred house Wookies. Wait, hang on. This is actually a great intro to the versus segment I want to do. I want to do All a right. rapid fire versus segment. So we'll start with that. Dobby versus Ewoks. Uh, well, Dobby's uh, could take out all of the Ewoks. Okay. But it depends on whether or not you give him that f***ing sock. <laughs> if okay. you give him a sock... And if the Ewok gives him a sock, it's full of rocks. It's and it full knocks of rocks. him out and kills the Empire. Yeah, yeah. Okay, iPhone versus Android. Uh, oh, don't ask me that. I, I've just I've been an iPhone guy since the beginning. There's no wrong answer. That's I fine. know, I know. No, but fine. Marvel versus DC. I, that one I've, I will never answer. It's just You too... coward, answer it. No, I don't want to answer it. You, can, you go to the comic book shop. You can only buy one comic book. What is it? Why are you forcing me to make political decisions like because this? Because I'm wearing Larry King's suspenders and now things are serious. <laughs> Chris Hardwick, <laughs> into the comic shop. You can only buy one thing. There's a shelf in front of you. Which one do you pick? Go. Oh, I probably have more Marvel stuff than I have. Marvel, excellent. You heard it right here. I'm D20 saying... versus D12. <laughs> well... Uh, I'm gonna go D20. All right. I'm gonna go D20. You know why I go why? D20? Because the drama of hitting uh, a natural zero or a natural 20 is unparalleled to any other dice roll in the game. All right, that's fair. Twitter or Instagram? Um, I'm starting to lean Instagram. Really? I just remember how I said there were no wrong answers. I like telling I stories wrong. with pictures, Will. Okay. By the way, can I tell you why Instagram? Because I've gotten to take pictures with so many people that I'm super flipped out over. Yeah. And now that Instagram is basically a diary. Of my adventures. Okay. Alien or Predator? Uh, alien versus Predator. Yeah. Um, I think I gotta go Alien. Why? Uh, because Predator is just kind of a douche. Right. He hunts for sport. He hunts, hunts for sport. So alive. basically, um, you know, Predator is like, just basically like a Duck Dynasty guy. <laughs> and <laughs> Deep Impact versus Armageddon. <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> but Armageddon had that Aerosmith hit. Um, I'm gonna go Armageddon because I think it's because I think it's uh, it's timely with the comet. The correct answer was neither. Uh, Hulk Hogan versus Roddy Piper. Roddy Piper. Yeah, control. they live. Yeah, of course, absolutely. Video games versus board games. Uh, I don't want to bum you out, Will. But it's video games. It's video games All for right. me. Batman or Superman. Um, well, I mean. I gotta go Batman. Why? Because Batman is a tortured, sociopathic nerd. And Superman- Superman's an alien from another world who's lost his entire family. I understand that, but we didn't really start seeing all the pathos of Superman when we were, we didn't really see all that growing up. Batman protects Gotham City, Superman protects planet Earth. But Superman's basically a hot jock, and Batman's, uh, you know, a, a Greek hero. I will accept that. Okay. Chris Hardwick, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Today. It's nice uh, to see you. Grade me. Grade you? Yeah. Um, I... Because I'm usually in that chair when we're doing interviews. I'm going to give you an A minus, and the minus is because you didn't wear pants with buttons so that you could attach the suspenders. But That's everything fair. else... That's fair. A. That's fair. Thank you. I want to say... A very special thank you to my friend and guest, Chris Hardwick. Uh, thank you to Larry for letting me be king for a day. And also, please stay tuned for the Chris Hardwick-hosted Talking Larry King Now immediately after the show. Talking King. Talking. <laughs> Talking. Talking. Talking.